Welcome to the video tutorial on Adobe Acrobat Sign Workflow Designer and Workflows with Power Automate. The Workflow Designer is used to create workflows that tailor the signing process to fit your specific business requirements. Before I show you how to set up a workflow, I want to cover just a few features, then some actions you or your account admin might need to take before you start. Workflows also create an easy to follow and consistent send experiences for everyone involved. With workflow templates, Senders are guided throughout the send process. It's easy to specify the documents to be included in an agreement, the characteristics of the participants, form fields to be pre-filled by the sender, communications to be sent to the participants, and things like agreement expiration or password options, and more. Now that you have an idea of why workflows are great, here are a few things you need to know to enable them. In order to even have the option to configure workflows, the feature has to be enabled. To do this, go to Account Settings, Global Settings, Custom Send Workflows, and Enable Access for the desired users. Checking the box Enable Sending Agreements Using Only Workflows means users will be required to use a workflow when sending agreements. Enable Workflow Designer for Administrators only allows admin and group admin users access. OK, now that we have that set up, here's how you as a user can access this workflow feature. First, navigate to Workflows in the top menu and Custom Workflows on the left panel. Click Create Workflow in the upper right corner to get started. Workflows might feel a little complex at first, but let's start with the basics. To start, creating a workflow consists of defining the following steps. Workflow info, agreement info, recipients, emails, documents, and sender input fields. The workflow info section defines the workflow itself, which includes naming it, entering custom instructions for the senders using it, and granting permissions to use it. After entering a workflow name, you'll add instructions for the sender. These instructions display on the top of the send page when the workflow is used to send an agreement. Instructions can be added using HTML tags. Next, you'll specify who can use the workflow. I'll show you the options. The first is Selected Group, a drop-down field that displays all groups the creator has access to. You can also change it to any user in my organization, meaning any user in the Acrobat Sign account can use the workflow. And just to point out, it's a good idea to hit save periodically as you progress through the workflow designer. Now that you've specified who can use the workflow, we'll review agreement info. On this step, you define and customize the agreement information that displays on the send page. Here is where you enter the name of the agreement which will show on the send page and in the please sign email heading. This field is required and the label is editable. You can enter a message for the recipients next. This message displays on the send page when the workflow is used to send an agreement. Just like the agreement name, this field is required and the label is editable. If needed, we can also add CC'd parties with their email addresses. You can define the minimum and maximum number of emails allowed and make this field editable for the user. Now, as the sender, I can specify the language for the recipient. This setting lets me decide whether the language selector displays on the send page and if so, what default language should display. Now I'll show you Send Options. This one is Set Password to Open Downloaded PDF. When this option is enabled, the sender can specify a password for a PDF that is downloaded. If you enable this option, it sets a signer verification method to password as well, and the same password will be used. You have the option to make this a required setting, which would prevent senders from disabling it on the Send page and require them to provide a password. This is the Completion Deadline option. If you enable this option, a sender can specify a completion deadline on the send page. You can also select the default number of days the recipients have to complete the signing process using the Days to Complete Agreement option. This setting is editable on the send page. An additional option is Allow Authoring of Documents Prior to Sending. This lets senders modify document form fields in the authoring environment using the Preview option on the send page. You can also enable authoring by default to automatically enable the preview option on the send page. Next, you'll specify the recipients and the routing order in the recipient's routing section. To add another recipient before or after an existing recipient, click the Add icon, then select the role you want to insert. To specify a parallel branch, click the Add icon above the recipient and select Parallel Branches. To delete a recipient, place the cursor over the recipient bubble and click the Delete icon. To customize a recipient, you'll place the cursor over the bubble again and click the Edit icon. When you're editing a recipient, you can configure the recipient label or recipient email. 
For example, you could change the default recipient label to HR Manager. The labels for recipients must be unique within a workflow. For email, you would just add the email address of the recipient. You can also check this recipient is a sender, which will insert the sender as the recipient. Okay, now sometimes you and I might need to send a document to a group of emails, not just a single participant. Here is how you can do that. If you check Mark as Recipient Group, a recipient group is added to the workflow instead of a standard recipient email record. The recipient group can be left empty or populated with one or more email addresses in the email field. Here you can update the recipient's role. For this workflow, I'm going to choose Signer. You can also mark Required if a signature from the recipient is required. Enable the Editable option to allow the sender to update the email address for this recipient on the Send page. Identity verification is where you select which type of identity verification is required for the signer. I have a few options to choose from, but your options might be limited based on what is enabled by your Acrobat Sign Account admin. When you're done with your recipient configurations, click Save. Next is the Email section. In the Email section, you can control which emails are sent during the signature and approval process based on various events. For example, you can specify that notification emails be sent to recipients and CCs when an agreement is canceled. Check the boxes for the events you want to trigger an email notification. We are close to done at this point, but now it's time for the more important part of our Acrobat Sign workflow, documents. In the following section, you can specify which documents should be included in the workflow. In the document section, you can enter a document title, which displays in the documents area of the send page when you send using the workflow. You can also click the Add File icon to attach a document from your Acrobat Sign Library. This document is automatically attached when you send using this workflow. Now, what if you need a workflow that has a little more document flexibility? No problem. If no file is selected, the workflow allows the sender to provide a file when sending the agreement. If you attach the wrong files, you can click the Delete icon or the X next to the file name to remove it. Enter the document name next and make sure it's a name that will be identifiable to the sender. The name of the uploaded library document is defaulted, but can be overwritten. The Required option specifies whether the document is required, and you can click the Add Document button to add rows for additional documents. Document titles must be unique values. The Delete Row icon deletes the entire row. Now let's get into signer input fields. When senders have these fields predefined, they can use these fields to input information. These input fields are mapped to form fields defined in the documents and can use these fields to pre-fill content prior to sending the agreement to the signers, approvers, and recipients. In the Sender Input Fields panel, click Add Field. Then for each row added, you can configure the following. Field Title, which will show on the Send page for the sender to reference. Document Field Name, where you enter the field name for a field on the attached library document. The field name entered here must match the form field name in the document. Default value, where you enter a default value if any. Required, which you enable if a value for this field must be entered before the agreement is sent. Editable, which allows the sender of the agreement to modify default value. The delete row icon, which you can click to delete the entire row. Fantastic, now you know the basics of setting up a workflow. But how would you access a workflow you or someone in your organization set up? Let me show you. On the home page, select Start from the library. Select Workflows from the options on the right, then select the workflow you want to use. Then click Start. The Send page will display. This workflow has really simplified the process for us, and now all we need to do is complete the fields that are required. In this example, I need to add an email address that isn't predefined, and I can add a CC email address. This is also where I could upload additional documents if my workflow allowed it. Looks like the last thing I need to do is add the required field information, and since my workflow has a password required, I will set that too and set a reminder for the recipients. If you have preview and add signature fields enabled, when you click Next, you will be taken to a page to review your document signature and form fields. The new custom workflow send page offers an improved user experience. Some of these functionalities that are shown on screen. Thank you for joining me today. Workflows can take a little bit to conceptualize, but once you start using them, you'll be amazed at how much time they can save you and anyone else in the workflow. Additional custom workflow controls are in Account Settings under Send Settings. Here, you can enable the new customer workflow Send Experience. 
By enabling template-defined signature placement, a custom workflow can be used in combination with a library template. Then document signature fields will be placed in the corresponding signers, taking into account optional signers that have been left blank. And if you're an enterprise licensed account, you should check out the Power Automate workflows capabilities that are part of your account and how to access them. Acrobat Sign allows for seamless Microsoft integrations. This is perfect for all Acrobat Sign enterprise license accounts looking to automate their pre-signing or post-signing processes. To use this integration, you'll need to enable it by your account administrator from the Account Settings Workflow Integration tab. Once enabled, the integration is accessed through a tile on the homepage or a new workflow tab in the top navigation bar. If you are a customer with existing Power Automate licenses through Microsoft, you can also use them. Take a look on this page for more information and links to get you started.